snap tight assembly system locks end channels to wall sheets without the need for tools or fasteners. To assemble each panel, the perimeter channels are secured to the top and bottom of each sheet. Gently tap the channel over the snap tight lugs and work your way along the sheet. Each channel should be fit to the center of each sheet. Simply tap the channel along until it's aligned. We're going to join our splice channels now. Basically, we're just joining a pair of channels together to make a longer one. There are three parts, a left channel, a right channel, and the joiner. Looking at the part numbers, you'll see that the left channel has the letter L and the right channel has the letter R at the end of the part number. There are also printed arrows pointing to the end of the channel that needs to be joined. The joiner, called a CSJ, needs to be put in the right way to match the channel. Make sure that you've got the long sides matched up. Place the CSJ centered on the end and press in as shown until you hear it click. Repeat this with the other side and then make sure that both halves are butted up against one another. Do this for the rest of the splice channels in the pack before beginning construction. Let's assemble our ridge beam. To make the 2.3 meter long ridge beam, we'll need the left piece, which is a 97 BLR, the right piece, which is another 97 BLR, the joiner, which is called a ZASP, and then we'll need eight tech screws with neoprene washers. The first step is to remove the protective film that covers the capping of the ridge beam pieces. Take both ridge beam pieces and make sure you have them orientated the way shown and then turn them over. Slide the capping of one under the other and then push them together until the hat sections are flush. Place the ZASP into the underside making sure that it's centered. Then turn the beam back over. We need to fix both halves of the beam to the ZASP using eight tech screws. Make a mark 10mm from the top cap as shown. Then make three more marks 50mm apart. Then mark the four on the other side. That's all eight. Now get the tech screws with the neoprene washers. Be careful not to over tighten and break the washer like this. Secure both halves of the splice ridge beam to the ZASP with eight tech screws with neoprene washers. Let's do the rear panel assembly. To construct the rear panel, we'll need 154B channel, 181D channel, two 30A sheets, and one 31A sheet. Start by laying out your sheet so that the 30A sheets are on either side of the 31A sheet. Make sure the side of the 30A sheets, which has the holes on top, overlaps with the matching holes in the 31A sheet. Overlap these sheets by one rib and then secure with four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Take the 54B channel and attach it to the top of the sheets using the snap tight method. Ensure that the short side of the channel goes to the outside of the panel. Take the 81D channel and attach it to the bottom of the sheets.
Use two 10mm self-tapping screws to secure the CSJ and channel together. Repeat this for the top channel, securing the CSJ and channel with two 10mm self-tapping screws. That completes our rear panel assembly. Let's do the roof panel assembly. To construct the roof panel we'll need one 60B channel, one 81C channel, two 86A lips and three of the 49A sheets. Lay out the sheets so that the holes at one end are all in the same orientation to the bottom. Overlap the sheets by one rib and then secure with eight of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Take the 60B channel and attach it to the top of the sheets. This should be the edge that doesn't have the row of holes along it. Make sure that the short side of the channel faces towards the outside of the panel. Take the 81C channel and attach it to the bottom of the sheets. Remember to put the short side of the channel to the outside of the panel. Fasten the channel and the CSJ with two of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Now attach the 86A lip to the side of the sheets, sliding it between the sheet and the channels. Once it's in place, secure with three of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Take the remaining 86A lip and slide it between the sheet and the channels on the other side. Once it's in position, secure with three of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Repeat all these steps again to make the other roof panel, they're exactly the same. Time for the side panel assembly. To make the side panel we'll need one peak brace, one 83L channel, one 83R channel, one 81C channel, one 36L sheet, one 42D sheet, and one 36R sheet. Begin by laying out the sheets so that they're in the following order from left to right. 36L sheet, 42D sheet, and then the 36R sheet. Overlap the sheets by one rib and then secure all the sheets with six of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Take the 83R channel and attach it to the top right of these sheets. Make sure that the short side of the channel is facing towards the outside of the panel. Take the 83L channel and attach it to the top left of the sheets. The channels will need to meet in the middle of the panel.
place the peak brace over the pre-punched holes in the top of the channels. Secure the peak brace with 6 of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Take the 81C channel and attach it to the bottom of the sheets. Secure the channel and CSJ using two of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Repeat all these steps for the other side panel. They're both exactly the same. Let's construct the left door panel. To make the left door panel, we'll need one 12A door plate, two pad bolts, two 58C channels, one 58A channel, two 91A jams, one 89C jam, and the door A sheet. To start, note the orientation of the sheet. The pre-punched holes for the door plate are on the right. Take the 89C jam and place it over the edge of the sheet which has the holes for the door plate. Use two of the 10mm self-tapping screws to secure this jam to the sheet. Take the 58A channel and place it on the other side of the sheet. Make sure that the hinges can extend upwards towards the outside of the door. Use three of the 10mm self-tapping screws to fasten the channel to the sheet. Take the 58C channel and snap tight it onto the top of the sheet. This channel will go over the front of the existing channel and over the jam. Secure this jam with a 10mm self-tapping screw in each corner. Repeat this process for the other 58C channel, attaching it to the bottom of the sheet. Fasten with a 10mm self-tapping screw in each of the corners. Next, we'll attach the 12A door plate by placing it over the pre-punched holes midway up the door on the side of the sheet. Fix this door plate using 6 of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Now, flip the sheet over. Take one of the 91A jams and place it over the diagonal row of pre-punched holes, sliding one face into the corner of the panel. Fasten one 10mm self-tapping screw through the sheet and into the jam. Use another 10mm self-tapping screw to fasten the other end of the jam to the sheet. Now do the same for the other 91A jam, sliding it into the corner and lining it with the pre-punched holes. Secure the jam and the corner channels using two of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Use another 10mm self-tapping screw in the other end of the jam. We'll attach the pad bolts. For this, we'll need to use the supplied 4mm nuts and bolts. Place the pad bolt over the four pre-punched holes in the top of the sheet. From the underside of the sheet, push through the bolts and then finger tighten the nylock nuts. Now use pliers or a shifter to hold the nut and then use the drill to tighten up the bolts. Repeat this process for the other pad bolt at the bottom of the sheet, placing it over the holes and then using the four nuts and bolts. Now 
Flip the door back over and finish securing the jams using six of the 10mm self-tapping screws along the diagonal holes. This completes our left door panel. Let's construct the right door panel. To make the right door panel we'll need one 12A door plate, one pad bolt, one 58A channel, one 58B channel, two 58C channels, two 91A jams, and the door B sheet. To start, note the orientation of the sheet. We have our holes for the door plate on the left. Take the 58B channel and place it over the edge of the sheet which has the holes for the door plate. Use two of the 10mm self-tapping screws to secure this channel to the sheet. Take the 58A channel and place it on the other side of the sheet, making sure that the hinges can extend upwards towards the outside of the door. Use three of the 10mm self-tapping screws to fasten this channel to the panel. Take the 58C channel and use the snap type method to attach it to the top of the sheet. This channel will go over the top of the sheet and over the front edges of the 58A and 58B channels. Use a 10mm self-tapping screw in each of the corners. Repeat this process for the other 58C channel, but on the bottom of the sheet. Again, using a 10mm self-tapping screw in each of the corners. Next, we'll attach the door plate and pad bolt. Position the door plate on the pre-punched holes midway up the sheet. Fasten it using a 10mm self-tapping screw. Next, take the pad bolt and position as shown. Fix using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws and finish off with a final 10mm self-tapping screw. Flip the door panel over. Take one of the 91A jams and place it over the diagonal row of pre-punched holes, sliding one face into the corner of the panel. Fasten one 10mm self-tapping screw through the sheet and into the jam. Use two 10mm self-tapping screws to secure the top corner channels. Use another 10mm self-tapping screw to fasten the other end of the jam to the sheet. Now do the same for the other 91A jam, sliding it into the corner and lining it with the pre-punched holes. Secure the end of the jam and two bottom corner channels using three 10mm self-tapping screws. Use another 10mm self-tapping screw in the other end of the jam. Flip the door back over and finish securing the braces with six of the 10mm self-tapping screws. This completes our right door panel assembly. Let's do the front panel assembly. To complete the front panel, we'll need 154K channel, 154L channel, 179E channel, 190F jam, 289A jams, and two of the 39B sheets. Lay out the sheets with a gap for the doorway. Orientate the sheets so that their sides with the four holes are to the outside. Take the 54K channel and attach it to the top of the two sheets. Make sure that the short side of the channel is facing towards the outside. Take the 54L channel and attach it to the bottom of the sheets.
Take the 89A jam and place it over the inside of the 39B sheets. The notches in the jam will slide into the channels. Align the jam with the pre-punched holes in the channel and secure with a 10mm self-tapping screw. Repeat with the other end of the jam and secure with another 10mm self-tapping screw. Take the other 89A jam and place it onto the 39B sheet, sliding it into the top and bottom channels. Align the jam with the pre-punched holes and secure with a 10mm self-tapping screw. Repeat this for the other end of the jam and secure it with a 10mm self-tapping screw. Use a 3mm drill bit to drill out the two holes in the jam and then secure with two of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Repeat this for the other 89A jam. Take the 90F jam and slide it into the channel at the top. The notches go over the jams at either end. Secure either end of the jam with two 10mm self-tapping screws. Drill out the two holes in the centre of the channel and CSJ and then secure with two 10mm self-tapping screws. Drill out and then secure the remaining holes with four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Take the 79E channel and place it into the channel at the bottom. Once the channel is in place, secure either end with a 10mm self-tapping screw. Drill out the holes in the channel and CSJ, then secure with two 10mm self-tapping screws. From underneath the panel, use a 10mm self-tapping screw in each of the corners of the door opening. That completes the front panel assembly. Let's attach the doors. Lay out the front panel so you have access to the door hinge holes. Then drill out the holes with a 3mm drill bit. Lay the right side door panel over the front panel so the hinges align with the holes. Using a pop riveter and three pop rivets, secure the top hinge to the front panel. Repeat for the other hinge, securing it to the front panel with three more pop rivets. Place the left door over the front panel so the hinge is aligned with the holes.
Secure the left door to the front panel with six of the pop rivets in the top and bottom hinges. Our doors are now attached. Time for the final assembly. Stand up the rear panel or get a friend to hold it. We'll start by attaching the right side panel. Slide the top and bottom channels of the right side panel into the notches in the rear panel. Once the pre-punched holes are aligned, fasten using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Repeat the process for the left side panel, making sure that the holes at the front are aligned. Once aligned, fasten the sheets together using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Now we'll attach the front panel. We recommend you get a friend to help you hold it. Align the front panel with the left panel, slotting the channels together and making sure that the holes line up. Once aligned, fasten the two panels together using four of the 10 mil self-tapping screws. Repeat the process for the right side, aligning the panels, then fastening with four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Attach the ridge beam to one of the roof panels. Orientate them both as shown. Make sure that the side with the 60B channel goes into the ridge beam. Secure the panel to the ridge beam using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Take the roof panel with the ridge beam attached to it and lift it onto the shed. Get a friend to help you place it onto the shed and make sure that the lips are on the outside of the side walls. Align the ridge beam with the holes in the peak brace. Fasten the ridge beam to the peak brace by using a 10mm self-tapping screw at either end. Use one 10mm self-tapping screw to hold the lip to the side wall. Don't fasten all the holes as we'll want them loose to get the next roof panel in. Repeat for the other side using one of the 10mm self-tapping screws to hold the lip to the sidewall. Place the remaining roof panel onto the top of the shed, sliding it so that the lips are on the outside. Pull the edge of the roof panel and slide it into the ridge beam. You may need to wiggle the roof panel to get it all the way in. Fasten the ridge beam to the roof panel using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws.
Fasten the roof sheets together using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Drill out the hole in the peak brace and ridge beam, then fasten with one 10mm self-tapping screw. Repeat for the other end of the ridge beam, drill out and secure with one 10mm self-tapping screw. Align the corner hole in the roof with the hole in the channel, then fasten with one 10mm self-tapping screw. Repeat this step for the other corners, and so it means you'll secure with three more 10mm self-tapping screws. Use four 10mm self-tapping screws to secure the roof panel to the rear wall. Use four 10mm self-tapping screws to secure the roof panel to the front wall. Finish securing the lips to the side panel using 10 10 mm self-tapping screws. Take the gable cap and fold as shown. Hook the gable cap under the two roof panel lips and place over the ridge beam. Drill out the holes in the cap and then fasten using two of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Attach the remaining gable cap to the other side. Drill out through the holes in the gable cap and then fasten with two of the 10mm self-tapping screws. We'll attach the pad bolt hasps now. Place the hasp over the pad bolt shaft and drill out a hole. Secure the hasp with one of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Drill out the remaining hole and secure with another 10mm self-tapping screw. Do this again for the exterior pad bolt. Place the hasp over the pad bolt shaft. Drill out both holes and secure it with two 10mm self-tapping screws.
Firstly, position the shed onto the slab, making sure the walls are squared up and centered. Take your angle brackets and lay them out in the positions as shown, spacing them equally along each wall. Using these brackets as a template, go around and carefully mark where the holes are on the slab and on the wall. Drill 3mm pilot holes in the wall centered on these marks. Now switch out to the 10mm drill bit and drill through these pilot holes. Next, take your hammer drill and insert the 10mm masonry drill bit. Drill down through the marks we made earlier. Be sure to go down deep enough for the height of the Dyna bolt. From the outside of the shed, take the 10mm bolt and poke it inside. You may need a friend to hold it there. Align the angle bracket with the bolt and then tighten the nut by hand. Tighten it further using the shifting spanner. Put the Dyna bolt through the bracket and into the hole in the slab. Tighten this nut on the Dyna bolt with a shifting spanner. Now that this has been done at all positions, the structure is anchored. Now the shed is complete, any leftover holes can be finished off with a screw.